Greetings everyone, this is Miss Tara from the Northwest Library and I'm back again this month to share with you some of my favorite picture books. Now, if you see a picture book in here that you're interested in, you can give us a call and ask us to reserve that copy for you or you can go on the website and reserve a copy for you there. Now, we'll go ahead and get started. Now I know Valentine's Day is kind of past us, but it's always nice to hear a book about ways to say I love you. This book is by Marilyn Singer, and it's called Ways to Say I Love You. And I really like this one because it's a how animals say I love you. So, uh, garter snakes, they huddle together. And it says people like to cuddle too. And then, um, bower birds make bowels, bowers. And then how people do too. So this is talking about how animals um, say I love you and how people do it similar as well. Say I love you. So it's actually a beautiful poem about love and all the different ways it is shown through nature. So this is a fun one. Um, like I said, I know Valentine's has passed, but this is still a fun title. Uh, my next book is by um, Elise Scravo. And she is one of my favorite authors. She has written some really cool books, um, like Disgusting Critters books, um, that are a lot of fun. And this one is called The Wrench. All right. And this might um, resonate with parents really well. Um, so this is The Wrench. Uh, and this is a story about this little guy, this pink bunny here. And he's riding his bike, and it breaks. And he needs a wrench to fix his bike, okay? So he goes into the store, and do you ever have that moment where you go into the store and you get everything except for what you were supposed to get at the store? Well, that's what Mr. Bunny here does. At one point, he goes home with a refrigerator hat. Another point, he goes home with musical pajamas. And he keeps going back to the store and never getting his wrench. So how does he get his bike fixed if he never remembers to get a wrench? So this is just a cute story. Um, it's a little bit more wordy. So I would probably say parents are probably going to read this. Um, a little bit more text. And the text is smaller, um, which makes it sometimes difficult for kids to read. So this might be one that you'll have fun uh, like a screaming machine that you might have fun reading with your kids, okay? And if you've not read the Disgusting Critters books um, by Elise Scribell, I would, uh, I highly recommend that you check them out um, and any of her books. They're a lot of fun. This book, um, you know, February has been super snowy uh, for most of us. Um, so this book is called Once Upon a Winter Day. It's by uh, Liza Woodruff, okay? And um, so this little boy goes to his mom and he really wants a story, but mom is really busy working. Um, you can tell she's working from home. And she says, why don't you go outside and play in the snow? And he comes across a feather and some cedar wax wings and a mouse um, and lots of other little animals. So in the end, he does get his story that he was looking for. Um, he just does it on a winter day in the nature. Um, so again, this is Once Upon a Winter Day by Liza Woodruff. And kind of goes with all the snow that we're getting right now, right? I love the picture in the back with the mouse and the fox. This book is a little bit smaller than most books. Um, uh, this is, um, uh, I think it's Michaela Fabria, and it's called I Am a Capybara, okay? Um, a little bit, this is a lot easier to read, not as much text. So if you have a new reader, um, this might be something, once they were learn the word capybara, they might have, might be easier, but it does get into a little bit more wordy. Um, so this book is about a capybara, and he talks about all the things that he is not, he has to remind people that he is not a rat. Uh, let's see what else he says. I am not a mouse. I'm not a beaver. I'm not a bear nor marmot. I'm a capybara, the biggest rodent in the world. 
So he talks a little bit about the differences between dogs and capybaras. Excuse me. Um, you know, he meets other animals and he talks about how he's different. So I just thought that this was kind of funny because I've seen a capybara at the zoo, but I really don't make know what makes them different from other animals. So this was a good picture book to learn about the capybara. This is probably the funniest book that uh, is in my list. This is called Bunnies on the Bus uh, by Philip uh, Ardow. Okay. Bunnies on the Bus. We all know wheels on the bus. It's a sunny day, a summer day in sunny town. And the turtles are waiting and people are waiting to get on the bus. But the bunnies are driving the bus. Okay. So there's lots of fun pictures, lots of things to look at. Um, you know, different animals. This kind of reminds me a little bit of Zootopia, the animals in it. The drawings re really remind me of um, Zootopia. So bunnies in the aisles, bunny in the aisles. Do you sit down or you'll all end up in a pile. So good rhyming, fun pictures. I think your kids will really enjoy bunnies on the bus. I really like this one. It's a seaside stroll. Um, great for uh, an early reader um, because there's very little text in it. And this is about taking a seaside stroll in winter. And it's about what the beach looks like in the winter time. Um, so nice illustrations. They're all bundled up like we are. And they go to the beach, little girl and mom, and they check out all the things that they can see on the beach. Um, and yes, you can see just the one word. So I love this book, uh, Seaside Stroll. And this one's by Charles Trevino. Lovely book. This book is interesting. It is wordless. And if you've seen anything that I've done before, I love wordless picture books because it gives your child um, a moment to look at the pictures and for them to create narrative skills by telling you what's happening in the book and creating a story based on the pictures, okay? So this is Over in the Shop by, um, Over the Shop by Joe Arnell Lawson, okay? And it is a wordless picture book, all right? And so they say there's a little girl and her grandparent and they run this shop here and over the shop is an apartment, okay? And they need to rent this apartment out. Um, and so they have to clean it out and they keep bringing people up to look at the apartment and the windows are broken and there's a cat up there and um, the light bulb is broken and so nobody wants to see it. But in the end, a couple sees it and they love it and all together, they clean it up, grandma, uh, grandparent, the little girl and, the, and this couple, and they get the cat, um, uh, and it just, it's a really nice story. So again, wordless picture books, you might think is a waste of time, but they're really good for your kids because they, like I said, they'll help build narrative skills as they build the story in their mind and share it with you. So I recommend this one. It's called Over the Shop. I really, really like this book, I Will Dance. Um, it's by Nancy Bo Flood, and I like the illustrations as a lot by uh, Juliana Sweeney. And this is about a little girl who is in a wheelchair, and she talks about how when she was born, she wasn't supposed to live a minute, not two minutes, not three minutes, and certainly not 10 years worth of minutes. But she is bound to a wheelchair, and she wants to dance. And everybody says, dance in your mind, dance in your mind. But that's not what she wants. She really wants to dance. So her mom sees an article in the paper. Mom reads in the paper, audition for young dance. All abilities, all ages are welcome. So she goes to this dance class. And there's people of all different shapes and sizes and different abilities. Um, and she gets her wish. So I think this is a really good feel-good story 
Um, we can talk a little bit about somebody who's different from your child and what they look like. Um, so excellent diversity book here. Okay, I will dance. This one is just funny. This is Mustache Duck Stash by Amy Young and AJ Young. There's not a ton of words in it, but if your kid can recognize mustache, they'll be set, okay? So this is basically about a mustache contest. And there aren't a ton of words. Um, mustache, mouse stash, duck stash, and um, all the animals in this book all get their best mustaches uh, and they go to the mustache contest and the ending is kind of funny. I I had to laugh about it. It was cute. So um, mustache, duck stash. And then I do have one nonfiction book for you. Um, and this is The Secret Life of Trees. Um, this is by Moriel Butterfield and Vivian Mindmaker. Mineacre, sorry. And it says, explore the forests of the world with Oakheart the Brave. And that's Oakheart there. Um, and it's just a lot of, there are a lot of pictures of when, a, you know, when Oak, what's his name? Oakheart was born, what he looked like, how he grew, um, why I'm rough and wrinkly. So it's not a book that you have to read cover to cover, um, but if your kids want to learn a little bit more about the outdoors or about trees or you just want to learn more about the oak tree that's in your yard, this might be a good book for that. So um, that's The Secret Life of Trees. So uh, I hope you enjoyed our books for February. I'm, of course, starting to put together all the books for March. Um, and then I will be back to share some books. I hope that in the comments of this post, you'll share some of your favorite picture books that you and your children have read together. Have a great day. Thanks for joining me. Bye.